Hey, what's up guys, and welcome back to this Epic Gamer video. So Blizzard has been known to have created some of the best games around. As a developer, they have had a lot of really big success, such as World of Warcraft, Overwatch, Diablo, and Hearthstone. However, that does not mean that Blizzard has not slipped up with some of their games and made some mistakes they regret. So in this video, we'll be going over five biggest mistakes Blizzard has ever made. Diablo for mobile. So, any Diablo fan will know by now of the Diablo Immortal backlash that happened in BlizzCon 2018. In case you guys aren't in the loop, Diablo was a hack and slash RPG franchise that is tied closely with PC games. Diablo 3 did see some console releases, and some people weren't a fan of that. However, what the Diablo fanbase really wasn't a fan of was their new IP, Diablo Immortal which is a mobile exclusive title with microtransactions monetized by Natiz, a mobile gaming developer that a lot of PC gamers are not a fan of. People turned up to the BlizzCon 2018 event expecting to get an announcement for Diablo 4, yet instead they got this. Needless to say, the fans were not happy in the slightest, and it even got to the point where the people were booing the developers on stage at BlizzCon, which is really crazy to think about. People are fans of your company and franchise, and they were so annoyed that they booed the company they support. That's saying quite a lot. Is there any plans to make this playable on PC, or is this strictly mobile forever? Uh, are there any... Uh, yeah, this, this, the current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Phone. Right? If this game wasn't under the Diablo franchise, gamers would probably have a much better reaction to it. Banning Blitzchung. So, Blizzard routinely hosts tournaments and competitions for their games. Hearthstone is one of the games that they've been heavily investing into to develop its esports scene. However, during the Hearthstone Grand Masters event in Taiwan, a player by the name of Blitzchung decided to shout, Liberate Hong Kong, during an interview after winning his match. <laughs> you may not assume this was that big of a deal, but this made Blizzard angry enough that they suspended Blitzchung and the two casters interviewing him. Considering the situation with Hong Kong in 2019, although most viewers in Taiwan and the Western would agree with this statement and saw no issue, this did not make Blizzard happy as previously mentioned, as in their rules, they have a policy of not allowing people to use their broadcast as a platform for real life world issues that can make Blizzard look bad. They decided to fine Blitzchung approximately $4,000 and was banned from competitions for an entire year, a lot of people felt like this was Blizzard siding with China, a country that provides a significant percentage of their revenue. The whole situation made a lot of Blizzard's fans very annoyed at this decision, with some people even deciding to stop playing some of Blizzard's games because of it. America's State Department even wrote a letter to Blizzard requesting a reversal of this decision, which shows just how big this situation had gotten. After a long time of people getting mad at Blizzard, they finally decided that Blitzchung's punishment was a little bit much. They decided to give payback to the fine to Blitzchung and reduced his ban to six months. J. Allen Brack even apologized during BlizzCon about the whole situation, so let's play the clip. You know, uh, Blizzard had the opportunity to bring the world together in a tough Hearthstone esports moment about a month ago, and we did not. We moved too quickly in our decision making, and then to make matters worse, we were too slow to talk with all of you. And for that, I am sorry, and I accept accountability. Dance off gone wrong. So during BlizzCon, there are a lot of fun and silly events that are planned. Things like costume contests and even dance competitions. Although Blizzard have canceled the dance contest today, one of the reasons might be due to the event that took place in 2010. During the 2010 BlizzCon, a WoW dance contest for each dance emote in the game was underway. When a kid dressed as an undead WoW character goes up on stage and says that he'll do the dance for the undead male. Unfortunately, things go really wrong. During this kid's dance, he slips up two times and actually manages to break his leg, somehow doing the undead dance emote, and it hurt him a lot. 
I'm not sure how this happened, maybe he landed at an awkward angle or he had a pre-existing condition, but after this he literally had to be carried off stage by security. Blizzard having someone break a leg in one of their stage events is something they probably want people to forget about. So with that being said, let's play the clip. Hey. Yeah. Oh, hello, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, where are you from? Arizona. Uh, uh, obviously. <laughs> what dance will you do, Daniel? Undead male. You leave me when I'm at my worst, feeling as if I've been hurt. That was some hardcore rocking. Are you serious? All right, we need some help. We have a, a medical issue. Can we here. get a couple people from backstage? You got them? No, wait, no, wait. Blizzard rejects Classic. The developers of WoW were sitting on stage doing a Q&A with members of the audience. When a guy asked J. Allen Brack if he ever thought about creating Classic WoW or other past era versions of World of Warcraft as they were back then. He was kind of rudely dismissed with J. Allen Brack, who is now the president of Blizzard Entertainment, saying that the guys asking the question is wrong and thinking that Classic WoW was fun. A lot of people felt this was a slap in the face like we weren't being taken seriously. The phrase, you think you do, but you don't, bugged a lot of the WoW player base. Many people spoke out against it, and petitions to create classic servers started from this point. Eventually, of course, we got Classic WoW, announced by J. Allen Brack himself, letting us play Classic WoW as we know it today. This launch period for Classic WoW was tremendous. On launch day, the World of Warcraft section on Twitch exploded with over 1.1 million concurrent viewers on Twitch, certainly breaking a record for WoW and almost on Twitch in general. A lot of YouTubers also saw massive amounts of viewers, and several months into the game, it's still believed that the number of active Classic WoW players exceeds active players in the modern version of the game, so delaying Classic servers for this long was quite a big mistake by Blizzard. Uh, have you ever thought about adding servers for previous expansions as they were then? No. And... And by the way, you don't want to, that, to do that either. You think you do, but you don't. <laughs> Remember when you had to like spam cities and say, need a tank, need a tank, need a tank during the Burning Crusade days? You don't remember that because now you just push a button that says go to the dungeon. Warcraft 3 Reforged. So Warcraft 3 was one of the games that put Blizzard into the gaming mainstream. For its time, even today, Warcraft 3 is a very well-made and polished real-time strategy game. An alternative to their StarCraft title, which is also very highly acclaimed RTS game. However, Warcraft 3 is very old, and when Blizzard announced that they'll be remaking Warcraft 3 for the modern era, people were really excited, of course. A lot of the small but dedicated Warcraft 3 community that still regularly play the game saw this as their big break, and an opportunity to get back into Warcraft 3 in the mainstream and of course expose it to new people and the game that they loved, with a new and improved system and modern graphics. However, this wasn't the big moment people were hoping for. A lot of the features promised in their announcement never lived up to the reality of things. Warcraft 3 Reforged was basically a retexture of Warcraft 3 and not much more. The dynamic and improved cutscenes that were shown in the announcement trailer in 2018 never actually made it to the official release, which gave a lot of people false expectations why would Blizzard show us a feature then remove it. There were also a number of issues like not having a ladder system like any other modern RTS game, which was the straw that broke the camel's back. Warcraft 3 got an overwhelmingly negative reception in its user review sites. As it stands today on Metacritic, the average review score of Warcraft 3 Reforged is 0.5, one of the lowest scores from a AAA game publisher in a while. Oh no, we're too late. These people have all been infected. They may look fine now, but it's just a matter of time before they turn into the undead. Oh no, we're too late. These people have all been infected. They may look fine now, but it's just a matter of time before they turn into the undead. Well guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this epic gamer video. Drop a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. See you on the next one.